The sole purpose of this video is to provide the world with the most basic financial understanding. Okay, it is not being taught in schools, although I wish it was because it would make my day-to-day -day life a whole lot easier. Um, it is the foundation of how any of us would even begin to create generational wealth for our families. Um, we're hearing that word more and more, but I think your average person doesn't truly understand what those words even mean, right? Generational wealth, okay? The reason why I say this is because in order for you to create generational wealth, you have to know what this picture looks like for you, okay? And, and this isn't just for small businesses. This is for everybody. From the time that we're born to the time that we expire, there is a financial aspect to almost everything that we do. That is why we are issued a social security number, which is basically your tax identification, as opposed to any other type of government uh, identification, right? We're given a social, a social security number. That's because there is a financial aspect. When you are born, you are a liability, okay? You're a liability and therefore an expense or AKA a write-off to your parents, caregivers, or whomever is responsible for caring for you, okay? Um, that, that is what it looks like. Now, until you go and make your own income, you are going to remain on somebody else's financial statement, okay? What that means is that if you are not generating income and you're just merely a liability or an expense to somebody else, that's what you are. You're a liability or an expense um, until you start making your own money. I realize that's a little hard to hear, but I am going to walk you through the most basic financial statement as an example, as it would stand for somebody that was new to the workforce. Okay. I realize that there's a number of different ways we can generate income, but for the sake of giving you a really good generic example, I'm going to assume that it's from wages in this case. Usually at that time, we go ahead and open um, a checking and savings account, or at least we hope so anyway. And if I were to look at your W-2 uh, from your employer, that would include all wages made for the year, January through December. Um, I have the number in your first box as being this amount, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in here. And that would be what that looks like, right? Unfortunately, that's, that's not the case and you'd know this. Uh, typically when we have our very first job, um, the, the shocking situation for most kids is taxes. Okay, and I will break down taxes and all the different taxes um, in the other videos, but um, for the sake of teaching, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, taxes withholding, okay? And we're gonna assume that this is your federal and state that is being withheld on your uh, paycheck, okay? Because that is represented in your tax return. Okay, um, and that's obviously going towards uh, paying your tax, whatever your tax liability is given your individual circumstances, right? So in this case, I am going to just uh, assume that that was, I I'm just coming up with good round numbers. So I'm going to just say it was 25.92. Okay, so if that is what we're saying, then the amount that hits your bank account is really not the 18,000, it's really 15,408. And why that's so is because you've generated this much in your wages, right? Based on your hourly pay. And they withheld um, taxes on your check for federal and or state if applicable. Um, and that's how I'm representing it. So in this case, I'm really gonna only be depositing 15,408 into the bank account. So let me revise that. So um, as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now, we obviously know that uh, there are expenses once we start making money and things that we spend on. So um, in this case though, I am going to just 
move $1,500 from the checking to the savings, okay? And I want, to, I want to show what that might look like. So if we were taking this amount that was direct deposited into our bank account after our employer withheld our tax, and I deduct the amount that I want to put to our savings account, the new checking balance is 13908 right? Does that make sense? Because it's 1500 here, okay? So that's what that looks like. So I'm going to actually replace this with 13908 which is the amount there. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is to keep my numbers um, and financials balanced, okay? Because I'm not using a software, okay? That's the other thing that I will uh, say on a side note, if your bookkeeper or accountant or CPA is uh, not asking you for these two pieces of information, you might want to um, uh, question that. So with the updated amounts, you can see that I still tie out. So the amount in the checking and savings total, 15408 which is also displayed here, okay? Which is basically our wages less the withholding for state and federal income taxes as applicable would leave 15,408, which is what we have because we don't have any other expenses at this time. Before diving into details of what may or may not be claimable, um, which I will uh, elaborate on in, in the other videos, um, I am going to just give some basic uh, expenses that I think a teenager would have at this time. I'm going to obviously skip over bank fees and things like that because that usually isn't going to be um, something that we would have at that time. But I will go ahead and start with meals and entertainment because that's probably where most of our money is going. Um, and um, let's do maybe a telephone or a mobile phone. Um, use and Descriptions maybe um, for anything like recurring, maybe an apple uh, eye storage or whatever, um, things like that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to kind of make it really basic. Okay, based on earning 15000 I'm going to just assume that maybe meals and entertainment um, will be the bulk of our money. So I'm going to, let's just say maybe $3,000 for the year on that. Doesn't mean it's claimable, but we'll elaborate. Um, I'm going to say, uh, let's say 70 bucks for your phone at 12 months, and um, for your eye storage, maybe 2.99 times 12. Okay, that kind of gives us a really good uh, financial picture, right? So we're basically saying that if we spent this, okay. That totals 3,875.88, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put that as a deduction, okay? So we said, um, what did we say it was? Let's see. 3,875.88. So if we were to deduct that from our checking account, right, because that's how we, uh, showed it and allocated it here, the new checking balance after spending this, right, that's where I'm getting these numbers from, you can see that that adds up to 3,875.88 right here, and that's where I got that number. So if you take 13,908, deduct what we spent at 3,875.88, this would be the new bank balance. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that here. Okay, and that is just for you to see that we still tie out. Okay, this is my this is my uh, cheat that will show me if we're off. So this is what we spent, and this is what a financial statement of somebody in this circumstance may have. I actually want to jump back and add another circumstance. I was going to wait to do this in a, a later video, but um, because it happens too often, and in most cases is represented incorrectly or people want to claim payments to a credit card incorrectly, I, I want to show you what adding a credit card liability looks like. Okay, so if you got a visa and the credit limit is uh, $1,000, 
um, but you charge a 500, okay? You don't get to claim that you paid $100 a month on this or whatever it ends up being, right? So how you would put this on your books is you are basically um, charging up your credit card for $500. And if, if that's what we were gonna do, we would want to look at the details of what you purchased because that's how we can identify um, the type of expense and whether or not it's claimable. So if it was for education and books or anything related to school, um, I might call it that way, okay? If it was meals and entertainment, I would obviously just increase it here, okay? And I'm gonna show you what that looks like because you can now see that I made the books unbalanced because it's counting that 500 twice, okay? That's how I know when these people uh, accounting gets out of whack because it's it's not correct. So let's remove that. So now you can see I'm in to I'm in balance again, okay? and that's what that looks like. Now, when you go to charge this and you start to make monthly payments, um, a portion of that payment goes to interest expense, right? So I want you to understand that that interest expense is also claimable. And most people don't capture this. So if we just, uh, and I'm going to make it a generic situation. So we're going to just say if that was um, the, the balance, and I'm going to just use a really low interest rate. Um, okay, let's just so let's just say 1950 in interest. Okay, so that's what that would look like, but so the balance of this would be by 1950, right? You can see that we still tie out. Before I wrap up and, and uh, emphasize the most important piece of information that I hope that anybody retains from this video, I do want to show you what making a payment to pay down this visa balance would look like in this individual circumstance. So if we made a payment, to our visa from our checking account, right? Because that's our account with all of our money. So I'm gonna say, we're gonna take that balance and deduct the $300 payment to our visa. And that new bank balance would be 973212. Okay, so you can see that I am not in balance now because I didn't finish the accounting. Okay, I wanna make sure you see that. So if we applied that $300 to bring down our visa balance, okay, I'm, I'm only saying um, the balance because we've already calculated the 1950 of interest. So if we did that and we paid $300 to this 51950 balance, the new balance of our visa would be 21950. And you can see that I tie out here, okay? Now, this is really what the financial picture looks like for somebody in this situation. But the main thing I want to explain now that we're looking at this balance sheet, which is all this, and the income statement, which is all this. Actually, I will bring this up some. Whoops. Okay. And what I want to show you on this Okay, these are basically your two financials, right? So this balance sheet is your net worth, okay? And this income statement is basically your income for the year. And what that means is this income statement zeroes out every calendar year. So January, it's at zero again. You ramp up as you earn wages and these expenses ramp up as, as we spend, and that is our what potentially would be our claimable income for the year, okay? That doesn't always follow suit, but for the sake of keeping everything basic, this is what we're, we're, we're learning, okay? This is your income for the year, it zeroes out. This is your net worth, meaning it never zeroes out. It's cumulative. I hope that was informative. I hope that I didn't make things more confusing than anything, but this is the most basic information and the most
very basic financial statement that I could possibly use as an example, right? So uh, what happens when you get married is we're basically taking two of these and combining it. Doesn't matter if you have shared bank account or not, it, that, that's just how it works. So I can add a bunch more checking accounts to this if I was dealing with somebody that was married. Um, even in cases where you might file uh, married filing separately, because right? I do have some of those as well. So in closing, I hope that uh, this shed some light uh, on things for a lot of you. And for those that I do work with on a day-to-day -day basis or at whatever capacity, this will kind of shed some light as to why I'm so adamant about keeping your business stuff on the business side and your personal stuff on the personal side. Uh, it's because that's the best way that we can utilize everything um, to your benefit. It's also how I can show you how to grow your business because if everything is mixed in with each other, I don't have a true and accurate picture of what it truly takes to run your business. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to get paid, like meaning you're not going to take any profits from your business if you're not making any money, okay? So this is why it is so important to keep these things separate, even though at the end of the day, you know, a lot of owners want to say, well, does it really matter? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's affecting my, you know, pocketbook. And the answer is yes, it does matter, okay? And it also is a, a tool for me to, to show you how we're making money, where we're losing money, and where we can make changes to grow your business. So um, that's about it. I hope that uh, this piques people's interest. And if you found it valuable, like, post, and subscribe. And we'll talk soon.